The following video is a Green Bay Area Public School District Purchase Resource for your online learning for Seesaw for Schools. Hi everyone, welcome to video two in the second module of the online virtual learning for Seesaw. Um, this session is going to outline the Seesaw class dashboard um, but we're really going to focus on two tabs within the dashboard and that will be the journal and the skills tab because they work very much so together. So I have logged into Seesaw through Classic Launchpad and in the top left corner I clicked on my name and I chose uh, my one of my classes. And when you first start um, seeing or posting activities and your students are starting to respond to them, it's really important to understand what it's going to look like when you start receiving um, responses to activities and how it's going to look on the journal tab. So if you look at my screen here on the right hand side, you can see the title of my class. And then below that, there are five different tabs here. I'm focusing first on this journal tab, which is the far left side of the tabs. And you'll notice under the journal tab, there are a bunch of sub tabs. And really, the way that it's laid out is when you click on the class journal, it tells you right now I've got 18 items only. And at the beginning of the school year, you're only going to have a few items. But then as the year goes on, those items build up. So it's important to know how to manage all of this and view all of it. So on the journal tab, if you click on class journal, you'll see every single item that students have posted, any student. So it's going to become a little overwhelming because it's essentially just like throwing up on the page with all this information, right? But if you click on class journal, one way to think about this is, you know, you can see each individual student this way by scrolling up and down on this class journal page. You can also slide to the right of this class journal sub tab and you can click on this folder icon to the right. And this might be a very, very important for specialist teachers because if a student submitted an activity and they placed it into an art folder, then when the art teacher comes in, they would click on that journal tab, click on class journal, click on the folder icon, and then they would go into that art folder and they would see all of the students' journal entries for just art. And you guys would do the same thing if you were going into math or if there was music items. But keep in mind that these things only show up in these folders if the students put them there. So just keep that in mind. So I know that there were students who placed three items in this art folder. And when I click on it then, on my dashboard now, you can see the art folder icon at the top. And it shows me that Shelly posted something in the art folder. And you'll see the date in the bottom right corner of her activity submission, so you know when it was posted. Um, and then as you scroll down, you'll see every single entry. <laughs> you'll see every single entry into this art folder. Okay, so that's if you choose to do the entire class journal, and then going by folder. The other option when you're in this journal tab is you can click on each individual student. And when you click on each individual student, so I'm going to choose myself here, this Liz student. Okay, so when I click on Liz student, you can see the most recent item that I have submitted. And you'll notice that it also, like on the journal page itself, you can see that the most recent item I submitted was um, the kindness scavenger hunt. And I can see that date right here in the bottom right corner. I'm highlighting it with my cursor. Um, I submitted this on May 21st as a student, right? Now, as a teacher, when you click on each individual student, that allows you to really focus in on what that student has done for their work for the week. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can just click on an individual student. Now, the beautiful thing is, is let's say I'm reviewing Liz's assignment here. I have the option as a teacher to, um, for this particular kindness scavenger hunt, I can like 
what she has posted. I can also leave a teacher comment and notice I can type my comment here in the comment field. Or if I slide my cursor to the right, you will see a microphone icon. This is where you can record your voice to leave a comment for that student. This will be extremely beneficial for students who struggle in reading or if they're really young and they can't read yet, you can leave verbal comments about the work that they've submitted. But I can also click the X if I don't want to leave a comment. Next to the like and then the comment, you have um, a bubble that's got a T in it, and this is where you can write a private note. But notice that private notes are only visible to teachers, and you're probably wondering, why would this be beneficial? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's beneficial because when it comes to report card time, or if you want to save and share information with families at a later date, and they've completely forgotten about it, and you want to share some notes that you have or thoughts on what they did with this assignment, this is where you could keep notes on the student's progress for yourself to later communicate with families or just for grading purposes. Notice again, I have the ability to type this private note to myself, um, but I also have a record feature where if I'm just faster at saying what I'm thinking, I'll do that, okay? I'm gonna close out of that. So we've got likes, comments, private notes or teacher notes. And then um, this is the skills box. And you'll notice that in particular, the skills icon is not filled in with blue when my cursor is over the top of it. That means when I, as the teacher, sent this activity to the students, I didn't attach any skills to it. That means that I can't give them a rating scale unless I attach a skill to it. So if I forgot to do that when I sent it out, I would have to attach a skill for each individual kid's response. So that means for Shelly's response, or I'm sorry, Liz's student response here, I would click on the skills icon, and then I would have to actually tag a skill in it. So if I wanna use this first one here, then I would have to rate it over here on the right hand side using the stars. Now keep in mind, that when I set up my class settings that I explained in video one of this module, I selected um, a four star rating. And that's because if I give the student one star, it means I'm giving them a grade of little growth. The second star would be some growth. Third star would be good growth. And then fourth star would be excellent growth and so on, you know. I'm sure you get the idea. So for these purposes, I'm going to attach this skill. Now keep in mind, if you forgot as a teacher to do this on the original activity push out, you're gonna have to do this individually for each and every kid when they respond to this activity. So just food for thought when you're setting up an activity. I'm gonna give them three stars for this activity. Thought they did pretty good. And then I'm gonna click the check mark in the top right corner. Perfect. So now that skills icon that's underneath Liz's response here to this activity has changed. It's no longer just gray. It's now filled in blue and there's a number one next to it. That means that one skill has been tagged to her response to this activity and it's been rated. Perfect. The other thing you can do is if a student forgot to organize this activity into a folder, you can help them organize the activity after they submit it. So as a teacher, when a student submits an activity, I can click on the folder icon and then I can place that activity into a folder. If a folder doesn't exist, then I can create one. Maybe I want to create a technology folder, whatever. Um, so either way, you can put it into a folder to help keep that student's assignments or activities organized in content folders. Okay, I'm gonna close that out. And the last icon that is below this student's activity submission is the blog feature. And I'm not gonna go through that right now because that's a whole nother topic. But for those of you that are interested in the blog, you can always go to Seesaw's Help Center website and you can learn more about the blog there, okay? So as a review, we are on this journal tab. 
And we know that we can click on the class journal and we can view every single journal response that has ever been submitted by a student. <laughs> You can click on um, the class journal, of course, and it'll appear in a vertical scrolling motion. But keep in mind in the top right corner, you can also click on there's a calendar icon. And when I click on that calendar icon, it gives me the option to view it in months. So maybe I want to go back to just May's activities. And you'll notice that on May 14th, there were eight items that were posted to the student's journals or there were eight items that were posted from students onto this journal page. So they completed eight items. Awesome. So then I want to view just those eight items for just that day. Um, so that's in the calendar view of the class journal. Your other option again below this journal tab is to click on each individual student and focus on just that student's journal submissions for maybe the day or the week. It's up to you how you want to manage that. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take our focus away from this journal page now that we understand the layout of it. And I'm going to focus instead on the fact that once a student submits an activity and you as the teacher, so I'm going to go to Liz's student here, so earlier I had mentioned that um, when a student submits an activity, either you have to attach a skill to it at, when, after they submit it, or in the case of the second activity, there was already a skill that was attached to it when I sent it out. So the student, when they got the activity and I set it up with a skill attached to it, now I can um, look at Liz's 2D shape response and after I've looked at it and commented what have you I'm going to click on the skills icon <clears throat> and you'll notice that at the top it says tagged that means that this skill was already tagged when I set up the activity and uh, um, the once it's tagged, then you can give it a star rating. Okay, so I've given the student three stars for their work that they submitted. Now, where do I find the graph to view the student skills? Great question. So we're going to navigate from this journal tab to the right hand side and click on the skills tab. And now again, you have different options of how you can view the skills. You can choose to do it by category. So do I want to focus on just a specific category or a specific skill? Do I want to focus on a specific subject, ELA or math? Do I want to look at it by student? Or do I want to look at it by all of the skills that I have tagged? It's really up to you. So right now I'm going to focus on just one student. I'm going to click on Liz. And now I can see that right now um, in her use of technology, so far she's gotten a rating of a two, which is pretty good. So then if I wanna look at subject, I'm gonna go into ELA. And now I can see all of my students listed here. And I can see, now this is a terrible example, but then you would see your skills lined up on the top here in a row and then going down the bottom, you would see their rating for each student. And then over time, you could see how that has progressed, whether they have gotten better or it's not gotten better. And the beautiful thing about that is now you've got a snapshot when you get to report card time to help you get an idea of how they've been doing in ELA or math or whatever other skills that you are attaching here. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. It was an overview of the journal tab and of the skills tab on your class Seesaw dashboard. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to comment within the assignment posted in Google Classroom for this video. Um, you can also reach out to your building tech integrator or library media specialist if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.